Good morning. All right. So Hurricane Ian has finally come through. That messed me up for a couple of days. Uh, the the barometric pressure just with the changes and everything just really, really super painful and messed with my nerves uh, badly. So I apologize that I missed a couple of days for the podcast. The, um, the other day, one of my daughters made a decision. Uh, actually, I probably should say a series of decisions over a period of time. And she got hurt. Now, she wasn't expecting that she was going to get hurt. She was kind of like on autopilot, right? Well, when we make decisions for a period of time, those decisions become habits. And so then there are destructive habits and there are constructive habits, just like there are good and bad decisions, right? And in this instance, it was uh, uh, destructive because it made one thing didn't seem like it was a big deal, but then when it became a habit over a period of time, uh, she ended up getting hurt and I had to have a doctor, che doctor check her out and make sure that she was okay. But I had to end up doing that in the middle of the storm that was coming through. And so of course the challenge with that is, you know, making sure that I'm doing things safely and, and correctly to, to not only take care of her, but take care of me and take care of us. The, the challenge with habits is that they kind of get on this autopilot. We don't really know what's going on. Um, it's the same thing that we were talking about when we will drive to work and we get to work. We don't even know how we got there. Well, it was a habit and that habit just kind of brought us there. We were either thinking in the past, we were thinking in the future, we weren't really in the present moment. And so then that autopilot took us habitually to where we were going to. And there are times when we, when we are paying attention if you will. And that was the, that concept of observing ego where you kind of like step out of a situation and you look back at it and you say, huh, is, you know, what's going on here? Is there something I could be doing better? And maybe shutting down an argument, shutting down a discussion um, because it's, it's not constructive. Okay. The, the more secure we are, the more, um, we can identify with our family, with our parents, with our ideals, with our values, our beliefs, our preferences, the better off we are at, at being able to say, um, you know, not only to our kids, but that our kids can learn from us. This is good. This is bad. We don't want to do that because that's going to, that will endanger you or that will lead to permanent consequences for a temporary issue that, you know, maybe you're going through a phase, which happens. Okay. But if you get to a place where envy is the, uh, it, you know, you want other people to feel like, oh, you're great. And you should really respect the things that I'm doing. That's destructive, right? So we're talking about narcissism as opposed to just being healthy and living your life. A lot of social media is filled with that narcissism. You'll see people putting up their best picture. Oh, you should envy me. I'm walking through the, the, uh, you know, a forest in California or whatever, and I'm just living this fantastic life. Um, and you should follow me because I'm so special. None of that is healthy. <laughs> okay. Chances are there are also a whole lot of underlying destructive things that it tends to be childish um, can certainly lead to criminality and a lot of things that are oh I don't know uh, manipulative controlling etc right if we're thinking about constructive or positive decisions it's win-win but sometimes that win-win is really it's buried right you don't necessarily know so for example taking a vitamin every day as opposed to surgery right Surgery is oftentimes considered win-win because we're cutting out a problem and you're going to heal, but not everybody heals from it. And the fact of the matter is it can be win-lose because if you had been taking care of your health before you got diabetes or before you got cancer and you weren't eating certain things, then maybe you would have had a better, healthier outcome without the surgery or without 
you know, having to inject yourself with insulin, whatever the case is, there are some things that are just genetic and you can't control that. So then again, it comes down to your attitude about a situation and recognizing those preferences and whatnot. So here I am, I'm talking to, talking to one of my girls and she hadn't been doing something for a period of time. And it's like, all right. So we didn't identify that the physical pain she was in might have been solely because she wasn't doing one particular thing that we had trusted she was doing. Uh, she, so, you know, you can take, you can take medicine on a daily basis. You could drink water on a daily basis. You could drink, you know, or do things that are healthy on a daily basis, like drinking coffee, uh, extends your life. I guarantee it. Uh, but the, the follow on effects, you don't necessarily know that that's going to cause those issues. So I ended up having that conversation with her about consequences and about decisions and things. And she felt really, really sad. And my wife said, you know, you're, you know, you shouldn't guilt her like that. I said, no, in this instance, she needs to understand the guilt because the decision she made could have had a very dramatic impact on me and her as we were driving through a heavy storm because I'm dad, I'm going to take care of my kids. But she had, she needed to understand that. Now she does. At least I believe she does. And so we'll see, you know, we'll see how that, how that continues to play off. But in the meantime, you know, your decisions lead to conscience and intuition, right? If, if they're constructive and you have a conscience built into what you're doing, then you are going to have your, um, your decisions guided by that internal compass point, right? And if you have intuition and your intuition is saying, well, based on all these other things that I've seen before, I need to behave in a particular way. Then you're going to end up with, you know, a good decision. You end up with wisdom actually, because wisdom helps you to balance out where you are. And so, um, you know, that's part of the maturing process. It's part of growing up. Hopefully she learns the lesson. Um, but I'm still dad. I'm still going to do what I can to take care of her. And that also means sometimes correcting her. Okay. Um, but all of this, all of these good decisions coupled with wisdom ends up leading you to intention and purpose, right? And so she, she has a, uh, a gift, if you will, in science and she is good at math and she enjoys building and devo developing, designing things. So my goal is to then help focus that for her as she's going along because <clears throat> her intention is, is showing up in a certain way, right? So now good decision-making coupled with intention can really help you set a bullseye for your kids. So as they learn and as you grow and you guys have a stronger and uh, you know, healthier relationship, hopefully this gives you a little bit of the, the underpinnings of things that can maybe give you another tool in your chest to explain things to them so that they understand why you're telling them a certain thing. I know I'm learning myself, but uh, yeah. Listen, thanks very much for watching. Let me just bless you and send you on your way. Father, thank you for all the moms, dads, and kids that are watching these podcasts and listening to them. Lord, I am grateful. Mm -hmm. I am grateful for the opportunity for me to share what it is that I'm learning, and I hope that it helps them. And now, Lord, strengthen them, encourage them, give them wisdom and guidance. Send the resources to them so that they know how to take care of their families. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, listen, take care. Catch you again tomorrow. Bye-bye.